nobody wins when the family feels It get lonely at the top, it get lonely It get lonely at the top, it get lonely It get lonely at the top, it get lonely It get lonely at the top Me and one ain't helping Man, when they stepping, I love you like a brother, and Damn. I wish I was there for you. Four shooting incidents here in Dana Beach. One of them, of course, the high profile shooting of uh, uh, this little boy, eight years old. You can see his friends now gathering around the very same spot where he was shot down. Arvis Brown is the man believed to be behind several Dania Beach shootings. Arvis Brown has just bailed out of a vehicle in Tallahassee. Part of a vicious gang responsible from everything to home invasions to murders. That's how the feds describe these men who are now facing federal charges tonight. NBC6 reporter Jamie Garola. This part one, because I have some interrogation video that I'm going to later play for you guys. But in today, we're going to talk about the Broward County boogeyman who turned state witness with the help of his crew, including the rapper. In one of the last videos we did, we talked about the Broward County, Florida rap beef that left two mothers deceased. Now, since that incident, there's been a lot more information that I had discovered, mostly just public facts. And what I quickly discovered is that this Florida rapper who we're going to discuss not only have enemies from the opposite side, but also within his own camp, not to mention... This rapper gave a statement to authorities when he was first arrested in 2015 that was later used to indict his crew in 2021. So without wasting too much time, remember family, I don't give you no angle, I just give you the story. So with that being said, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're going to jump right to it. On 2021, three people was indicted on RICO charges in Florida, Broward County. They was a part of a gang allegedly called On Sight. And the three people who was in that indictment was Eric Hunter, AKA E, AKA On Sight Eno, Derek Slade, AKA D, AKA Soldier to the left, and Gregory Stickney, AKA Gucci Greg. And according to the indictment, Eric Hunter, AKA E, was the ringleader. Now out of the three people indicted, can you guess how many turned state witness? All but one, which was Derek Slade. Now I want you guys to stay with me, family. Because the ringleader was Eric Hunter, according to the indictment. He ended up telling on 14 different crimes that he was involved in and his crew members, step-by-step -step detail. Now, as we mentioned, the indictment came in 2021, but they was referencing crimes dating back to 2015. Check out the news clip. Part of a vicious gang responsible from everything to home invasions to murders. That's how the feds describe these men who are now facing federal charges tonight. NBC6 reporter Jamie Garola is in Fort Lauderdale with the details. The U.S. attorney says three violent criminals are off the street tonight behind bars after years of terrorizing Broward County. These two men are alleged members of a violent gang called Onsite. Court documents obtained by NBC6 say the Onsite gang lived up to its name to, quote, reflect the willingness of enterprise members to commit acts of extreme violence, including murder, without hesitation. 28-year-old Eric Hunter, a.k.a. E, and 27-year-old Derek Slade, a.k.a. D, arraigned today in federal court. Hunter is the alleged leader who planned, organized, and supervised the gang's criminal activity. Slade and a third person arraigned earlier this month are alleged to carry out the crimes. The indictment says the criminals, quote, engaged in multiple acts of violence to intimidate victims and reduce likelihood of resistance, engaged in drive-by shootings to engender fear, and while incarcerated, maintained contact with others to achieve the goals of the enterprise. The feds alleged the gang also used social media to, quote, maintain virtual presences and to establish and enhance the perception of the enterprise's violent nature and to recruit potential members and threaten other rival gang members. They allegedly used social media to post pictures of their crimes or potential victims. If convicted, they could face life in prison. In Broward, Jamie Garola, NBC6. Now, Erg Hunter, according to the indictment, even though it wasn't in here, he actually ended up beating the M1 back in 2011 when he took the life of his good friend, Dijon. Now, Dijon was from Hollywood and Eric was from Dania, but they was real tight. Eric ended up taking his life and I made a mistake on the last video and said it was for Briscoe, but it was over a female after later confirming to a close source. Dijon Brown, older brother, was locked up when this happened. Arvis Brown got out and in 2016, he caused havoc trying to get retaliation for the side. demise of his Face brother. Covered, leaving two people trigger, shot and having an eight-year-old eight lose half. their life on the Rashid's scene. Cousin, May he rest Brandon in peace. Cunning. Break in a case involving a number of shootings in Deerfield Beach, including the death of an eight-year-old boy. Police caught up with a suspect here in South Florida. And they also made arrests in Tallahassee. Local 10 News reporter Hatzel Vela joins us live with details. Hatzel. 
Janine, they can, they're telling us now that their man is Arvis Brown, 19 years old, recently out of prison, now arrested, caught up in Tallahassee. He, they say, is believed to be behind two of the four shooting incidents here in Dana Beach. One of them, of course, the high profile shooting of uh, uh, this little boy, eight years old. You can see his friends now gathering around the very same spot where he was shot down. Arvis Brown is the man believed to be behind several Dania Beach shootings. Arvis Brown has just bailed out of a vehicle in Tallahassee. Brown, 19 years old, just got out of prison in early November, locked up six years for a Lee County shooting. In the middle of the news conference, Sheriff Israel gives an update. Arvis Brown is in custody. Investigators believe Brown is responsible for the shooting death of 25-year-old Christopher Jordan on Christmas night. They think Jordan was killed in retaliation for a 2011 murder where Arvis' brother, Dijon, was killed. Wednesday evening, witnesses say a man gets out of a car's passenger side, face covered, pulls the trigger, killing 8-year-old Rashid Cunningham. Rashid's cousin, Brandon Cunningham, the intended target, was shot several times as he tried to shield the children, more than a dozen, who were simply walking home from a nearby birthday party. It is absolutely time to stop burying eight-year-olds. Rashid's grandmother, who in the past two days has not held back on emotion, talked to us outside once again. Why he my baby like that? He got me so empty. The family knows Arvis Brown, but still not sure why they were targeted, as they claim not to be part of this vicious cycle of crime. My grandson got shot two times in the chest, one time in the head. Didn't deserve it. This is a pickup truck that deputies say they have in their possession. A pickup truck they say was used in the Christmas Day murder. They are hoping to figure out who was driving, who may have been passengers inside this truck. If you know anything about that truck and who may have been inside, you're asked to call Broward Crime Stoppers. That number 954-493-TIPS. We're now reporting live in Dania Beach, Hatzovella, Local 10. Now remember, all this is because of Eric, but he ended up going to jail for De John Demise. Now he ended up getting out because no state witness, and he was released after about five years. Now before we talk about all 14 of the crimes that Eric had confessed to, I want us to talk about one in specific at this very moment. It was the 11th crime that Eric Hunter had admitted to on November 25th, 2015, during his plea on 8-26-2022. Counts 1 and 2, robbery slash kidnapping, August 25th, 2015. On that date, Eric Hunter, Gordon, and co-conspirators. Remember the word co-conspirators. Now, before we continue, that co-conspirator been all through his, Eric's indictment and his confessions, but he wasn't indicted. But that's going to later play key to the rapper. But as we continue, they say they kidnapped the victim in Daniel. The victim was known in the community as a large-scale drug dealer. Hunter, Gordon, and the co-conspirators surveillance the victim for several days. They observed him riding a bicycle to the local grocery store. Hunter, Gordon, and the co-conspirators were in a the vehicle. They hit the victim with the vehicle and thereafter assaulted him. They forcefully placed him in a vehicle at gunpoint. They drove him around, during which time he frequently passed out. Ultimately, they forced him by means of assault to place a phone call to a criminal associate. The associate brought 30000 to an agreed location. Hunter and a co-conspirator retrieved the money and then they released him. Gordon would testify that a Approximately four drive-by shootings were committed by Hunter and Gordon and a co-conspirator in order to intimidate the victim and a neighbor of the victim who was a potential witness in the kidnapping case. But it was somebody arrested for that crime back in 2015, later getting five years of probation after cooperating. He wasn't mentioned in this indictment or his name. Would that person go by? Cambrell Smart, aka Psycho Bob. But in the indictment with Eric and the on-site crew, it seemed like Psycho Bob was a part of that crew, but didn't get indicted because of his statements. Now this timestamp from the court was September 22nd, 2015. And before we count and describe the statements from each count, according to Psycho Bob, given the detective, I think you gotta understand, for him to get that plea and not be in an indictment, it's no such thing as giving a plea without giving a confession statement about everything that happened. They don't give it to you just because you was the first one arrested, which explains why his name wasn't mentioned and was used as a key word like most witnesses do in indictments. 
Now when Eric and Gordon had confessed to that robbery of that man for 30,000 holding him for ransom, it seemed that Psycho Bob was the passenger for that same incident. Now the victim wasn't named in the indictment, but according to Psycho Bob arrest record, AKA the co-conspirator, the victim was Toby's Barfield, which was the same details that Eric had to admit to. Count one, robbed with the firearm who was Toby's, the big time drug dealer, to deprive the victim of his property by inflicting fear and physical force. Count two, they batted Toby with a motor vehicle, AKA hit him. It caused damages to his arms, legs, and buttocks. Campbell Smart, AKA Psycho Bob, he later batted Toby with his firearm, causing additional damage to the victim's forehead. The first count was robbery with a firearm, the second, aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. Count three, they detained and restricted the movement of Toby against his will while inside the motor vehicle that Campbell Smart was passenger in. False imprisonment as an adult for count three. Count four, they forced Toby from his bicycle and into the motor vehicle to transport him against his will from the city of Dana Beach to Florida to the city of Oakland Park, Florida, and charged with kidnapping. And if Psycho Bob disclosed that he was the passenger, best believe he disclosed who was the driver and whatever else that they asked in order to keep him out the future indictment and these recent charges by just getting five years of probation. Now this was sealed on the 21st day of September in 2015. Six years later, his crew on site excluding him would be indicted. Now his confession of his interrogation has been done, requested. The jail phone call from Campbell Smart, AKA Psycho Bob, five disses, has been requested and a jail call of Braxton Davis. Now Gregory later find out as well as Erd that Psycho Bob is the one that's cooperating in a case because he wasn't indicted and he was listed as co-conspirator and they know that he was with them but instead of standing strong it seems Eric the one they called the leader he would testify and be a witness and still get life in prison Gregory he would get the same and Derek was the only one to take it to trial just three months ago he ended up still getting found guilty but just getting 20 in the feds and 10 in the state the only statement he made in court was this. I do want the court to know that in spite of the jury's verdict, that I still proclaim my innocence. And I know, and God, from the beginning, told me to salvation through the certification of the spirit and belief for the truth. As far as the 14 crimes of the 14 victims that the ringleader allegedly admitted to doing harm to, one of those robberies was even at a lower league football game. When they robbed a guy who was named Zoe Gatti after seeing him bet on the game and exposing his money. Now when you sit back and you think about it, this game took they self out, doing all this harm, even at a little league football game, possibly taking out mothers, all to tell on they self, all to have the person that's the rapper give them information to the authorities rather, years before their indictment, and he get to walk away from that. He's serving five years in the feds for a firearm as a convicted felon right now. It's crazy in itself. All in all, we send prayers to all the victims. Anyone who was affected by the series of events that we talked about. But in this video, we found out that the boogeyman of Broad County was the biggest state witness. Not to mention, his crew followed suit after the rapper was the first to give information. That's AKA the co-conspirator. Family, let me know how you guys feel about this one in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And today, I'll catch you guys on the next one.